Mom, stop it. I got it, says my son, who slaps my hand away because I'm trying to help him straighten his collar. I, I can't help myself. All my eyes see is this six-year-old boy struggling to get dressed. When I'm standing before really my 16-year-old son, who is taller than me and very capable of dressing himself. But fast forward five years and I'm waving goodbye to the same little boy going off to college. And still, I can only see a nervous child with an oversized backpack and an Iron Man lunchbox. It doesn't matter if your child is an independent 13-year-old or a 17-year-old and leaving the nest. Letting go when you feel like your child doesn't need you anymore is really tough. No, tough doesn't describe it. It's heartbreaking for many parents. Let's talk about what parents can do. Hello, my name is Christina Campos. I'm founder of The Impactful Parent, and every week I give you parenting videos that'll help you in your parenting journey. If you have a particular parenting topic or question about your school-age child that you would like for me to address, please submit it at theimpactfulparent at gmail.com or by messaging me on social media, and all submissions are kept anonymous. As parents, it's natural to feel a mix of emotions when we realize that our children are growing up and becoming more independent. The teenage years in particular can be challenging as our children assert their autonomy and navigate the world independently. And if you're feeling like your child doesn't need you anymore, here are five practical tips to help you navigate this phase of your parenting. So let's get started. Number one. Adjust your expectations, but stay engaged. I remember when my son was just a toddler. He used to push my hand away when I tried to tie his shoes for him. It seems like just yesterday that he was getting mad at me because we needed to get out the door like 10 minutes ago. So I'm just trying to put his shoes on quickly and get him out of the house. But all my son wants to do is tie his shoes himself. He didn't care about my timeline or being late. My child just wanted to practice putting on his shoes. Well, it might feel like yesterday, and maybe because today, it's a lot like that again. Not much has changed. My son still doesn't care about my timetable or being late. He just wants to practice adulting. He wants to prove it to himself, to me, to his friends, and even the world that he has grown up and he can do it himself. Sometimes we celebrate when our kids are taking the initiative, taking on new responsibilities on their own or trying new things. And other times your child will pick the most inconvenient time to hold their ground and say, mom or dad, I got this. Let me do it. But when your child is driving you crazy with their independence, try to work on changing your mindset. Remember that school-age children need a different kind of parenting than younger children. The more they grow, your role is going to shift from guardian to coach. The older your child is, the more you need to drop all of that authoritarian boss, dictator, that is inside of you, and instead imagine your child as a student or a player, and you are their life coach. See, with this new outlook on the situation, you can see that your child is craving autonomy so that they can practice adulting. They want to prove to themselves that they can do it, or they want to practice to get better at adulting so that they can feel independent. And just like in coaching an athlete, sometimes the player wants to get out on the game and just play the game. They are tired of the lessons. They want to learn by doing with the oversight of their coach to watch, provide critique, and be there to support them if they fall. And that is what a good parent does.
in this phase of our parenting. This is what my child wanted to. He wanted more opportunities to just play the game. He told me to go away. But what he really needed me to do is to give him some space just to try, to practice, to fail or succeed alone. It's the alone part that's tough for us parents. So work on letting your child do more. Shift your mindset from parent to coach. And this has helped me a lot. Just to take some of that pushback that my child was doing and not take it to heart, not take it so personally. Because really, I just now can see his pleas of leave me alone as a cry for independence. And he's asking to practice adulting. He just doesn't know how to say that. So instead it comes out with, get away, mom, leave me be. So adjust your expectations to a coach's mindset and support your child from the coach's sideline. Number two, foster active listening. Have you ever tried helping your teenager with a problem, but all they do is roll their eyes every time that you make a suggestion? Well, me too. The mistakes that most adults make helping their kids is the adult automatically jumps in and starts suggesting solutions. <laughs> what? I know what you're thinking. Somebody coming in and suggesting solutions to my problems? How can that be bad? Well, it is for a teenager. <laughs> so yeah, that is the mistake that adults make. They jump in and start suggesting solutions to the problem. But let me explain why it's not so good for the teen. Picture it. My daughter has been hiding out in her room for a while now, so I can hear some commotion coming from her room, and I'm wondering what's going on. I decide to go and check on her to make sure that things are okay. When I walk into her room, she's visibly upset. I can tell from the runny mascara on her face that she's been crying. And since my daughter is visibly upset, I ask her if she wants to talk about it. And then, you know, tell me what's going on. Thankfully, my daughter takes me up on my offer and I get to hear about the middle school drama. After I know all about what has been said and he said and she said and everybody said, <laughs> I start to make suggestions on how my child can handle the situation. <laughs> Wrong. The minute parents go into fix-it mode, your teenager may shut down and tune you out. That isn't what they wanted. Kids trying to assert their independence and want to practice adulting on their own don't always want to take the easy path of listening to your good advice. Instead, they want to figure out solutions by themselves. So, no wonder my child was eye-rolling at me. I jumped in with unsolicited advice when all they wanted was a listening ear. And be careful about this because if parents jump in with unsolicited advice too often, the child may stop asking you to even listen to any of their problems. And I know that's not what you want. So avoid jumping to conclusions or giving unsolicited advice. 90% of the time, teenagers need a listening ear. And that's it. Yet many parents ruin this bonding time with their teen by going into fix it mode or saying things like, well, when I was your age. Okay, teenagers don't care about that. They see your experiences as unrelated because your experiences happened over 20 years ago. So instead, be a compassionate sounding board and provide guidance when they ask. Learn to practice active listening instead. And this skill is going to be very helpful in moving forward in your child's development. Number three, encourage their autonomy and independence. 
While it may be bittersweet to see your child become more self-sufficient, embracing their growth and encouraging their autonomy, it's not always easy. I don't want my baby to grow up either, but if you have a kid that's pushing your boundaries, pulling away from parental control, distancing themselves from your rules, and doing their best to be independent, then I suggest if you can't beat them, help them. Another mistake that most parents make when their child is asserting independence is trying to hold on to the rules and the relationship tighter. Just like sand, the tighter you squeeze, the more likely your child will slip through your fingers. I know this is completely against your first instinct to hold on tighter, enforce more rules, and get stricter with your child but these are not always the most successful steps to maintaining the bond with your son or daughter. So many children will only reject those efforts, dig in their heels, and it could even make the relationship between parent and child more turbulent. So instead, try leaning in and giving your child what they want, which is more choices. Notice how I didn't say more freedom. No, your child wants more choices. Just because you're giving your child more choices doesn't mean that you have to compromise your rules. What I'm saying is you need to look for more opportunities to provide more choices for your child within their day. Your child is asking for it, literally with their behaviors. So they want to feel like they have some control over their own life. So provide opportunities for them to make decisions and face consequences of their choices. This will help build their confidence and give them a sense of responsibility. Encourage your teenager to take on new challenges, such as managing their finances, cooking some of their own meals. Allow your child to face the consequences of their actions when appropriate, instead of saving them all the time. All these things empower your child to make decisions and learn from their experiences. And you, you can still guide them when necessary. And this isn't easy. I know I'm saying it and it's like, oh, okay, but no, this isn't easy. It is so scary to let your child have more choices because it also gives them more opportunities to mess up. However, a trick that has helped me is I try to remember that I only have a few more years to prepare my child for adulthood. Yeah, if you have a 16 year old, you only have two or three more years tops. And then I'm assuming you want them to leave the house and go be independent, whether that's in their own apartment or at school. So how many years do you have left? Is your child a freshman? Do you have four years? Maybe they're already a junior and you only have less than two. You may have a year or less before your child plans to move out, and it's your job to prepare them for the real world. It's better to expose them now to some truths and difficulties of life while still under your care and support than protecting them from all the bad stuff and then letting them discover that bad stuff when they're out on their own, living alone, college or away. Number four, Find new avenues to connect and bond. Do you want to go for a walk? Nah. Do you want to play a game? No. Come make dinner with me. Nah. Uh, how about the mall? You want to go to the mall? Still nah. As your child becomes more independent, finding new ways to connect and maintain a strong bond is important but it isn't always easy. This is going to take some intentional effort. Too often parents think that the bond between parent and child should be natural, but as your child gets older, it's going to actually take a lot of effort. Look for common interests or activities that you can enjoy together. This could be anything from taking a cooking class to hiking or attending a concert. For my oldest son, 
and I, we love to bond over fishing. This is something that I started doing when my child was young. And over the years, I continued to use fishing trips as a way of checking in and bonding with that child. But my second oldest is completely different. I have to bribe them to spend time with me. This child is ultra independent and always has been. Because I can't find any similar interest to bond over, I bribe this child with a once a week special outing just to get some dessert. And at the end of each week, we lead behind everyone and go to the ice cream shop. This gives me an opportunity to talk to my child one-on-one -on -one, and my child looks forward to the treat after a long week. It becomes a win-win for both of us. But my third child, again, completely different. I have to bond over video games. And I hate video games. Yep, sometimes parents have completely different interests than their child. And if you can't find a common interest, you may have to suck it up and be interested in something your child likes. This is painful for adults, but do it anyways. It is more important to spend time with your child doing something that they love than it is for the parent to be entertained. So whatever activity you and your child plan to bond over, make sure that that is an activity that the child wants to do. If they don't like it, then no amount of time is going to put them into the headspace to want to bond with you. So I sit and watch my son play video games a few times a week. I ask him questions about his game. I take an interest in why he likes the game. I ask him how he plans to win the game, who he's playing against, and what strategies he's doing this week to improve on his skills. Yes, this is painfully boring for me, but my child appreciates my efforts. And my youngest child, well, of course, she's different too, but we bond over books. We read together. Actually, I read to her. This makes reading more special. A few times a week, my daughter comes into my bedroom in full pajamas and comfy clothes to listen to me read to her a book we have chosen together. <laughs> no, my daughter is not two years old. My daughter is 11 and can certainly read by herself, and she does. But this time allows me to bond with her. She lets me read to her so that she can sit with her head on my lap and listen. It's very relaxing for my daughter, and it helps her relieve stress too. Some nights, I will even read her homework for her if it's appropriate. But the bottom line here is, and the reason I'm telling you how I bond with each of my four kids, is that you got to think outside the box and be intentional with your bonding moments. Put them on your calendar. Don't just wing it. You can't do that anymore. Your child's not little. They have their own schedules, their own things that they're doing. They're very busy. And at the very least, carve out at least 15 minutes daily to check in with your child to talk to them. I suggest doing this in the car or at the dinner table. Make it look effortless. But in reality, you're going to be doing things very intentionally. And number five, invest in self-growth. If your child is a teenager, it's time to start shifting energy from them to you. What? <laughs> I know you've been sacrificing yourself for years. Your attention and your time has been focused on your kids for so long because you've been concentrating on raising good humans that you may have forgotten what you use to like to do in your free time. As your child becomes more self-reliant, this is an excellent time to focus on your own self-care and personal growth. Engage in activities that bring you joy. Invest time in your hobbies and explore new interests. And finally, you are at the stage in your parenting that your child doesn't need you for every little thing anymore. Celebrate that. Take advantage. 
Taking care of your own well-being will benefit you and ensure that you are available and present when your child needs you. So dedicate some time each week to engage in activities that nurture your personal growth. So maybe join a book club, learn a new skill, practice some mindfulness, but stop making yourself last on your priority list. Carve out even more time for yourself by teaching your child to be more self-sufficient. Teach them how to cook their own meals. Teach them to drive. Make them do their own laundry because these kinds of skills are actually going to benefit you both. Remember, as parents, our love and support will always be important to our children, even if they don't express it in the same way they did before. By adjusting our expectations, fostering open communication, encouraging independence, and finding new ways to connect, and then finally, maybe even investing in our own well-being, we can evolve our parenting and foster strong relationships with our growing teenagers. If this information was valuable for you today, become a more impactful parent by downloading the Impactful Parent app. The Impactful Parent app is free and full of episodes just like this one to help you in your parenting journey. Because investing in your family looks like learning the warning signs of certain behaviors so that you could stop the bad things before they start and discovering new parenting techniques to make your parenting more effective. Download the app today. You got nothing to lose. It's a free download. So go to theimpactfulparent.com or your phone's app store and discover how you can step up your parenting game and become a more impactful parent. But until next time, you got this. I'm just here to help.